You know, we start with uh, just the tragedy that has struck our borough. It's getting national attention. Just uh, such a heartbreaking story of 15-year-old Lissandra Guzman Feliz uh, dragged out of a bodega and murdered. It was perhaps one of the most gruesome images that we have seen in a very long time. I, I think the last time I've seen something so gruesome, I, I said this before, was uh, when we saw ISIS uh, across seas uh, behead people. Uh, th this is something that n no human being should go through, let alone a young boy, 15 years old. These are grown men, and, and we are outraged. The community is outraged, and we should be. And we, th these, are, these are grown men who did this to a young boy who... Uh, did nothing to no one, who is the exemplary student. I just finished speaking to the principal an and student and an explorer, wanted to be a detective, wanted to be a detective since he was the age of five, had it all planned out. We were with, I was with the mother and the father in the apartment earlier today. Uh, and, you know, we got to channel this into something more positive. We cannot allow for these videos and these images to define us as to who we are as Bronxites. You know, we know that uh, life is not perfect here, as I say all the time. Uh, what we see is so many people out there on 183rd Street in Bathgate in the corner paying their respects. We were, I was there with uh, Congressman Adriano Espaillat earlier. We lit a candle. They, I just came from the funeral home, Ortiz Funeral Home, where the line is around the block. And people are mourning today. And we How is the mother doing? You've talked to her today. Ms. Guzman Feliz and the father are probably the strongest individuals that I've ever seen. Uh, the, remember that these images are enshrined in her and her family and, and, in, and in social media in perpetuity now. And yet, she has been strong. She has been grateful and appreciative. She, thought, she told me earlier today that the night that this happened when she was in the emergency room with her son, that she thought she was all alone. And she prayed to God to, to help her with support. And she wanted me to thank the thousands, the tens of thousands of Bronx sites. Today at the funeral home, we had folks online that came from Washington, D.C. So this has really struck a nerve, the way that this happened to the person that this happened to, to the family. Um, and her and, and, and her husband, they are just thankful. And they're going to need support, she says, moving forward when the trial starts, we have to make sure that we get justice for Junior. Uh, you know, as far as the suspects... And we will, we will. Yeah, and as far as the suspects go, we've seen arrests in this, um, you know, we've heard gang ties. Um, what is your take on the situation of gangs in our borough on this? So whether it's gangs or not, we have to ensure, and we'll talk a little bit about it earlier mm -hmm. or later, that we start to address violent crimes, whether it's done by gangs, whether it's done by criminal, uh, by individuals. Uh, with this particular gang, the Trinitarios, uh, they're cowards. These are folks who uh, prey on young boys and, and young women and try to either recruit them, and if you don't uh, acquiesce, then they then they take it out on you and physically assault you. And and in this case, these are grown men, such you know, pretend to be tough guys who did this, who mutilated, butchered this young boy. Uh, we have eight of them in custody now. I'm told by the police of, uh, and there's another one in question, but there are even more that are being sought after. So, social media, who that has. For many reasons, in many ways, we, we say social media could be bad. It helped out tremendously. It was used for positive and being able to identify uh, these monsters, these animals. And we still need people to, to give us whatever or to give the police whatever information they have because we need to bring each and every single one of these animals, again, to justice, regardless of whether or not they actually did the stabbing or they were inside of a car or they knew about it and didn't say anything, we need to send a strong message that we are not going to tolerate this as a society. As a BP of this borough, when you hear of this type of brutal crime happen in your borough that, you know, you're the head of, uh, what, what reaction do you have when I, you first heard? I, I personalize it because I'm also a father, Christy. I'm, yeah. I'm not just a borough president. I and two boys. Too. I have two sons. Uh, they're in their 20s, but I could never imagine something like this happening to my son. So I internalize it. I personalize it. I've been uh, sleepless the last couple of nights. 
uh, and I've been in contact with the family all throughout the weekend and the police. And so at the borough president, I think that is incumbent upon me. It is my responsibility to make sure that law enforcement is doing everything that they can so that we can identify these individuals and bring them to justice. And then it's up to me to go out there and, and assure the community that A, we're going to continue to help the family, B, we're going to bring these folks to justice, and then C, that we have to now see proceed as a borough uh, so that we can get more and more of our kids off the streets, so that we can give them something to do, so that we can work on finding them work and summer youth jobs so that we can uh, have um, uh, counseling and prevention when it comes to violence so that it doesn't get to uh, this type of level.